practically responsible for making the Super Eagles very competitive agree in helping you. us becoming African champions in 2013. I agree with you because um, Sunday Mba, who later Gokuro, Babono, you know, became uh, boys. the revelation of uh, the number one in 2013, who started playing in the quarterfinal stages, you know, uh, scored uh, the crucial goals for us. So I agree with you. Um, when you make the national team very competitive, the foreign based players now have it. Um, they, they are aware that um, they, there they are players at home yes, who can they, take their place. They don't have a regular shirt. So I think um, what the NFL should do is to ensure that um, the, the home based project is taken more seriously. Because we have a game October 17, if I'm not mistaken. October 18. October 18. In Between now and October 18, it's about uh, more than, um, less than three weeks. And there's no team yet, Tony. No, there's a team. Where is the team? We, we, I mean, the, the, I mean there, there's a team. Because Where is the we, team, we, Tony? No, we have, the, the coach has worked with these home-based players before we played against Tanzania. Remember, they were in camp for about two weeks. How many home-based players? The 18 home-based players that were in camp before the game against Tanzania. I mean, the bulk of the team. So, and so six, why, six why, why, why are they not in camp? Right now? Yes. And some of them are in the Olympic team. Some of them are in the Dream Team. Went to the African Games. The issue of fatigue is also there. What? Some of them are in the, in the team that will be playing against, what, what, uh, what fatigue, against Belgium. What fatigue are you talking about, Tony? What fatigue are you talking about? These are football players. We have players who play every weekend, midweek. They play the next weekend. Mm. You know, this, the football is their life. What, I, I think the NFF, you know, should arrange, again, a special arrangement where the home-based players will be in camp. Since, since the last chance, I, I, I think apart from last January when we played... Côte d'Ivoire in a friendly mm. with, with the home base with, players. With the home base players, we I have played, not had played a complete. Côte played, I think Yemen. Yeah, Yemen. We have mm. not had a complete home base players as a team. You know, in camp playing friendlies, and it's, it's a disaster. You saw what Burkina Faso did to our under twenty three team in uh, Congo, and the same Burkina Faso team uh, we are going to play in October eighteen. So it's a game that should be taken more seriously. Mm. I, uh, I, I stand to be corrected. I, I'm not convinced that the Nigerian Football Federation are taking that game seriously. Okay. Well, the NFL will have to show, I mean, to you that they are taking it very seriously. But I think that the coaches have been putting us together. I, I, I think the uh, Sunday Ulisse and his assistants have been doing a lot of work. Maybe you are not just saying it, but I'm sure they've been doing a lot of work behind the scene if, to ensure that we if, have a team that can if you are working, out, uh, if you are working, uh, working be, If you are working behind the scene, then mm. it will show. Don't worry, but it's not play. It should show. But, but if a play. man is walking behind the scene with his wife, uh, then in a few, uh, but, the but, few, in a few weeks' time, it uh, will show. Uh, but it's not, it's not immediate that you see it. You don't see it immediately. No, but uh, in a few weeks' time, you start seeing um, it. And in a few weeks, you will see the result of the Eagles as well. <laughs> in a few weeks. All right, don't you? Uh, that's an interesting example that you've given. But I'm sure that um, come October 18, we will have a good team, a team strong enough uh, to get us victory over Burkina Faso. Um, in the first leg and in the second leg of the African Nations Championship uh, qualifiers. All right, but talk to us about it as well. What do you think um, about it? How do you want us to go about this project? Uh, but I think that um, we will be able to get a team that will deliver uh, for Nigeria. All right, but let's talk about uh, um, the Golden Eagles now very quickly. Um, they are also getting ready about putting finishing touches to... Uh, preparations for the FIFA Under-17 World Cup that will be taking place in Chile later in the year. All right? And uh, Emmanuel America and the boys have been working so hard in training. They've been in camp for a long time, playing a lot of friendly games, playing a lot of competitions. And I think we should be expecting something good. But there should be a balance. Why are we expecting them to do well? Because we are defending champions. We have always said it over and over again, and the NFF have also said it, it's not about winning at all costs. It's about being able to throw up a new generation of players who will move from under-17 to under-20 to under-23 to the Super Eagles for a very long time. That's the target. Yeah, Tony, I agree with you totally. Um, they, they played a lot of friendly. I mean, the, the, the last one was in Suwon in, in, in South Korea, where they played third. They played Croatia, who incidentally is in their group in the World Cup. They also played Brazil. So I think it's a good exposure for some of these players who have not, you know, left the African continent, you know, to, um, you know, feel, have a feel of what um, the World Cup will be like. Like you said, Tony, I think there should be a balance. Why we want the team to, you know, defend their trophy, we also, you know, not put too much pressure on these young lads, Amala and his, and his players, you know, so, so that they will concentrate on what they are doing. Um, it, is, it is this kind of pressure that have forced um, some coaches in the past to, to, use, cheat. to cheat. You know, but mm. I have looked at these lads, you know, there is a saying that um, merely looking at a con, you will know whether it's uh, mature or not. 
you, you don't even need to touch the comb. But some of these players, I've seen them. They are they are quite yeah, young. They, they look they, they look, are quite they look young. You know, we have some we have children who are almost at their teenage age. And when you compare them to what um, the, the players in the, in the Golden Eagles, you now you know you are happy that at least we are getting nearer. Uh, to that age bracket. And I think that's the way we should go. If we have the right age, then we are sure that in the next 10, 15 years, if these players, you know, live up to their potential, we'll have steady supply of uh, players to the under-20, under-23 and the super egos. And what that means is that uh, there will be team cohesion. The coaches don't need to, you know, work so hard, you know, to blend the team. Mm. Uh, mm. So, I, 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 like you said, um, we, we, while we pray that the team does well, we should also not put too much pressure on them. These are young lads. Their careers are just starting. Mm. But, 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 but honestly speaking, what, what can you say? What, what kind of advice would you be giving someone like Emmanuel Lamunike, who was part of the crew uh, the last time we went all the way and we won? And we know there's potential of Nigerians. Uh, now he's in charge as the chief coach, um, going into this same uh, competition. What kind of advice would you be giving Emmanuel Lamunike at, at this point in time? Well, you know, Nigerians, um, though they, they want you to win all the time, but if you play good football, Nigerians will appreciate it. You know, the, when we played Congo um, in the qualifiers for the Olympics, and, um, you know, if, even though we, we, beat, we beat Congo, uh, Brazzaville 2-1, mm. uh, everybody, everybody was happy. Mm. The way Siasi and his team played, yeah. mm. played fluid, fluid uh, football, very cohesive. The players, you know, showed a lot of skill. So let him try and build a team that mm. will play good football for Nigeria. Okay, oh, hold on a bit, because I'm told that Emmanuel Lamunike is on to us now live from Abuja. So let's quickly um, go to Abuja to meet up with uh, Emmanuel Lamonike and um, hear what he has to say as we build up to the FIFA Under-17 World Cup in Chile. Uh, Emmanuel Lamonike, thank you for joining us on, on Sports tonight. Um, this thank is about uh, the, the zero hour. I'm sure about this time you are just crossing the T's, dotting the I's, getting ready to hit Chile uh, and uh, give your best for, for Nigeria. What should we expect from you, Emmanuel? I think, uh, first of all, what I have to say, thank you. I'm privileged that you called me this night. Uh, what I have to say is that, uh, you know, uh, we are aware and uh, we are conscious and clear that uh, we're going to Chile. But we also are aware that uh, in football, uh, you know, uh, you can say you have arrived. You just have to continue to prepare and to build yourself. We are doing the best we can humanly. And uh, the boys, they are also realizing what we've been telling them. Thank God we are privileged to participate in the tournament that took place in Korea. And uh, that gave us a lot of insight about what we expect or what we'll be expecting in the tournament. And I think, uh, like I said, you know, uh, what, what we have to do is to work hard, look at the areas that we have to improve our game and look at the area also that we have to continue to be strong. And hopefully when we get to Chile, uh, we'll be able to give a very good account of ourselves. Well, uh, Emmanuel, I know that coaches don't like to compare teams, uh, but we have the advantage of having you with the last bunch of uh, players who went to uh, the United Arab Emirates and won and the World Cup, and then you are now in charge of this team. W would you look at this team uh, and say champions in them uh, when you look at the quality of the other team that you went with two years ago? What? Uh, well, I think uh, I'm privileged to be part of that team that won the under-17 in uh, Emirates. Uh, and now I'm the head coach, like you, you have said. I think uh, each generation is totally different. What we are doing now uh, is to see how we can consolidate on what we have achieved. Uh, how can we make the boys to really to understand that when we have the ball, what we have to do, when we don't have the ball, what we have to do. I think that is the two key factors that matters in a football game. When you have the ball, what are you doing? When you don't have the ball, what are you doing? And I think uh, the boys, they are responding. You know, like I said, hopefully uh, we'll do the best we can. I don't, I'm don't. i not the type of coach uh, that likes to tell people we're going to do miracle, we're going to do this. We've got football. Uh, what is good today in football, tomorrow is outdated. What I'm more interested in is how can my players really understand and inter interpret the game that we really want them to play. And hopefully, like I said, you know, we are clear conscience. We want to go to Korea to, and we want to go to Chile, I mean, to defend our cup. But for we to defend the cup, collectively, we have to work very hard. We have to prepare ourselves in all aspects. Uh, and that's my, uh, you know, that's my thinking and that's my thought. And that's where I've been channeling my program towards to. Mm. Well, uh, Emmanuel, before, before I allow you to go, I'd like to ask you about uh, your plans. Um, um, this team, when, when are you traveling? Are there still plans for you to come somewhere to acclimatize before you eat chili? 
Uh, what was the program like? Are you going straight to Chile um, and get ready for the tournament? Or are you still going to come somewhere uh, before you hit?